Welcome back to Dial H for Hero Clicks. This is episode 247. I'm your host, Chris Britton. So let's go. Dial H for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day including all the latest HeroClick singles and sealed products. So check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Joining me in the studio again this week is my sexy ranch hand co-host, Calder Ness. What's going on, Calder? Howdy, howdy. Let's get rowdy. Let's get rowdy indeed. We like to start us off normally with what made us happy this week. There's a lot of stuff that made us happy this week, but let's start off with you, Calder. What made you happy? So it's kind of two things that all connect to my WKO trip. I went by the bank uh, the day before, to go ahead and get some cash uh, before I left for the weekend. And there's a gentleman in there who was wearing a trench coat and a ski mask as he entered the bank. And as I was waiting in line behind him, you know, a little a little just, you know, weirded out. I'm like, whatever, maybe he's just cold. It's, it's whatever outside, you know. He turns around and he says, I bet you think I'm going to rob the place, don't you? <laughs> and it's so... <laughs> It's so refreshing in life to meet people like that and know that they exist somewhere. It's, ah, thank goodness. Uh, so he kind of made... definitely something you never say in a bank ever. Definitely, yeah. You should absolutely not uh, cover your face when you go into a bank uh, for any reason or, or say that to another uh, customer or teller or whatever you want to say. So that was part one of my WK trip. Uh, I also did put up a blog vlog on Facebook, so people that have seen that have seen my poll so far uh, with Raft this time. So it was uh, open one booster at a time, pass your booster, take one figure out, pass the booster, and then you know go into someone else's booster. Uh, so it was five people on each side. It was only a 10-person uh, showing, which is a bit rough. So very first booster I opened, I, you know, I'm not going to lie. I screamed a little bit. I jumped out of my chair. I got the Ultra Chase Captain Marvel, nice. so I knew I was off. To a pretty good start. Um, and then the next couple of boosters, so this is what I ended up taking out of my other couple of figures that I used on my force. The second booster was then I pulled a super rare Daredevil. All right, so those are the two figures I kept from my boosters, and then this was my team I used that day. I had the common Silver Sable, the Dad Bod Spider-Man, the uncommon The Skull, Captain Marvel, Daredevil, and a common, the Hydra, which was Falcon, for an even 300 points. I learned of some limitations. So I had Spider-Man carrying around Captain Marvel. Uh, and then in turn, if I wanted to get him someplace, Spider-Man would carry him around. I never, this was just kind of a bummer, I never got to use the I Need Three Years to fully recover and bring back everybody to life. Uh, he just didn't die. And when he did, like, die once, he was the very last person on my force. And I thought that that was it. I was over. But it's apparently it's when he would be KO'd. So I actually messed up on my very first uh, game. And it was the only time he died. And I was like, oh, yeah, I guess, hey, he's dead. So uh, good game. And then as soon as we shook hands, someone's like, the game's over, right? I'm like, yeah, the game's over. You could have brought everybody back. He has to take three turns, and then you can bring Captain Marvel back because he's technically not KO'd. But uh, I lost the first game, won the second game, lost the third game, won the fourth game. Uh, they were all really good games. Uh, I realized that stealth really sucks for the skull. Uh, not so much for Captain Marvel, but with all the high defenses, Captain Marvel only having a 10 attack and stuff like that. It was a, it was a huge bummer. I realized that this team doesn't really have the damage output I need it to, especially since most of the time skull couldn't mind control people which really sucked i tried to put them on maps with very little hindering you know i put them on the skull train yard which has a pretty good open field of view stuff like that daredevil uh dies a lot faster than i thought he would in almost every game um the first game he had like no attacks at all daredevil i had him on hypersonic you know his his most useful was when he was poisoning people because there's not a ton of damage reducers so I did not make top four. We just did, because there's only 10 of us, we did uh, four rounds, cut the top four. I missed top four by 30 points, which was kind of a bummer. Uh, but the winner of the event was Devin Adams, Happy Little Hero Clicks himself, and he got uh, Prime Vulture. So it would have been a little tough to beat uh, Prime Vulture, or would it have? I think I actually would have had a really good uh, matchup against Prime Vulture, just because Daredevil doesn't really die 
and uh, I can bring everybody back to life. So, but once again, I didn't play against him, so it's kind of a say lobby thing. I got Captain Marvel. I instantly sold him that day, uh, so that was cool. Daredevil, I can sell. I got Black Dwarf and a Battle Royale, so I am doing very happily uh, financial wise, even if it wasn't a win. <laughs> Hey, so, just out of curiosity, how much did you sell that Captain Marvel for? Uh, you know, I did friend price, so I didn't have to deal with anybody online or shipping or anything. So I just said, hey, man, just give me 100 bucks cash. And I was like, so that's like, <laughs> that's probably like $30 under what he's really going for, about 130 But I was just like, uh, you're a friend. I don't like to do that to friends. Just to just be like, you know, man, I appreciate you, you know? So friend price, sure, 30 bucks off, whatever. Uh, so I don't have to use my card at all this trip or just use cash. It's cool. So, I mean, Cat Marvel paid for the trip. Daredevil I can sell probably some other time for some other money. Uh, so I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, going down to Kansas City has always been a financial uh, gain for me, whether it's buying that huge lot of hero clicks or getting this Captain Marvel. So I was very happy. And it felt just really cool to pull a Captain Marvel and uh, own an Ultra Chase for like a few hours. That felt just really awesome. So I had a great time. And, yeah, that's, that's about it. That's what made me happy this week the so WKO. Right on. Well, I have something. It wasn't my life in particular. It was something that I read on the Internet. It made me exuberantly happy and, quite honestly, is the coolest thing I've heard anyone do in the game of Heroclix in a really long time, and that comes from none other than our own Dial H community, actually. Uh, Vigilante Ben Jones, our man in Australia, did something that I thought was so unbelievably cool that it just needed to be talked about on the podcast. He put out uh, a string of tweets, and it goes like this. He said, Held my first event at school this year for the kids. Have years four, five, and six play, and we had a blast. It was a 300-point bagged event. They got a bag of 12 clicks and had to make a team. I do this as they keep the clicks, and they don't have many when they first start. Bags and prizes. He legitimately gives away his collection and it's it's groups of like 12 it's like little grab bags of like 12 hero clicks and you can look at these pictures it's just another reason to jump on to the twitter uh and then you need to look at ben jones's post here but he's given away like all of these hero clicks to these kids he said he planned for 30 people 18 people showed up which is insane and then the prizes that he gave away on top of giving away all of the clicks to all of these like newer – like these kids and possible newer players that are going to fall in love with the game and stuff like that. Like I just thought that was so cool. In the prizes are some like really good – like it's older stuff generally, but it's still really good stuff, you know? I mean there's there right, rares yeah. in here. There's some super rares in here. It's just like – the fact that he's just like, I'm, I don't need this, and he would rather give this away to a bunch of newer players and hopefully get more people excited for the game. I, I think he did more for the game of Heroclix in this one event that he set up, supposedly all by himself, than, than WizKids has done for the game like in the whole year of 2019. That's awesome. So I really did want to give like a major kudos to you, Mr. Jones, because that was like so awesome. Loved it. So, Heck yeah, man. Heck that yeah. Was, that, that was what made me happy. I assume that it made 18 kids happy. They're in New York. Yeah. That yeah, was... no, it's all about community, man. It's all about growing the game and being part of a good community. I love it. So, good on you, man. All right, well, we're going to move on to the podcast. Here at Dial H, we like to bring you uh, news related to Hero Clicks and other nerd related information. So, let's jump into that. This has the potential of being one of the biggest things ever for the game of Hero Clicks, or not at all. But we don't know yet, so I guess we'll just read you what we know. Which you may have heard of, but I'm excited to read it in my 1930s radio voice. <laughs> WizKids announces enhanced licensing deal with partner Hasbro. <laughs> God, and they also, I just want to point this out again. They can't, they just can't say one statement without. We're so we're so professional. On on the back, they're like, WizKids. The industry leader in high-quality pre-painted and unpainted miniatures and established board games announces a new licensing partnership with Hasbro today with the addition of beloved properties G.I. Joe, My Little Pony, and Transformers to WizKids' extensive line of miniatures. All right. Sounds awesome on the surface. Oh, yeah. 
it does not exclusively say, or specifically say that we are going to get hero clicks. Now, when they release information about WWE, they said hero clicks. When they release That's information true. about Orville, they said hero clicks. Not once do they say this is going to be for hero clicks. They just said that they got the license for miniatures for those uh, for, for the Hasbro lines. Um, it said to continue. It says fans can be can expect to see their favorite characters first appear later this year in both. Pre-painted and unpainted formats. Justin Zeron said, Much of the WizKids team has grown up with these cherished brands and are thrilled to be bringing them to life with the high-definition sculpting processes that our customers have come to love. And then there's a little thing down here, one little statement that I thought was very interesting. It says, My Little Pony and Transformers products will be available throughout North America. Lots of things to unpack in this. Obviously, we don't know if we're getting hero clicks. Maybe we won't. Hopefully, we will. But the fact that it says the, these two will be available throughout North America, does that mean that you won't get this stuff at all in Europe or all in Australia? Or maybe just you won't get, like, G.I. Joe in Europe? Or you won't get G.I. Joe? I don't know. It's weird. I, yeah, I, no one knows what this means as of right now, and we're definitely going to have to wait until we get more information Right. I would love to see this stuff made into hero clicks. I always, and just like a lot of other players out there, they want more lic licenses in the game of hero clicks. I love the idea of it. I really want to want them to do this, but I just have this little the feeling that they, if they were planning on making hero clicks of them, then they would have mentioned hero clicks. Right. You know, I feel like they kind of did their hero clicks announcement you know last week two weeks ago with orville which is you know still a bummer in my eyes uh i haven't changed much on that but maybe they're just steering away from saying hero clicks because maybe everybody feels like we're getting all the love which is um not true but anyways maybe they also didn't want to say anything specifically because they also just don't know what they're going to do with these products yet i mean i feel like my Little Pony, probably not going to get into Hero Clicks as much as I want it to, but it might get a board game. That's a pretty easy one to make a board game out of. Same thing with G.I. Joe being unpainted miniatures would be also really easy for people that want generic soldiers, something like that. And Transformers is a really interesting property that I know a lot of people love, but putting that into the game of Hero Clicks is going to be a little weird. Do we do... You know, two by two bases. Do we make them Pacific Rim hero clicks? You know, like maybe Whiskers is just like, oh, we're going out crazy to get all these properties, but we don't exactly 100% know what we're going to do with them. Obviously, they probably have an idea. Otherwise, they wouldn't have even went after Hasbro properties like at all if they didn't have a, you know, a single clue what they're going to do with them. But it just kind of shows that they aren't 100% certain which, you know, uh, property is going where. Personally, um, sorry, uh, my my split, my like personal split would be, I think the perfect way to do it is a G.I. Joe Transformers set, because they've crashed over in comics so many times, you can make this a set. Just make it like Avengers Infinity. The normal figures are G.I. Joe characters slash humans from Transformers, and then every case or every booster has a 2x2, two two, and it's a Transformer. Pretty easy. I think that's like the perfect way to do it. And then My Little Pony can be a board game, even though I want it to be a set. Whatever. <laughs> Um, I, I think there would be a lot of players out there that would – or, yeah, players, listeners, but just big fans of those individual properties that were around when they were kids. It's going to bring back a lot of nostalgia the same way that Batman did for me in 2018. I think that they would want an entire set full of just Transformers because, I mean, you've, you've got your Autobots, you've got your GoBots, you've got your Decepticons. I mean, you can fill out an entire set there, and then you could also fill out an entire G.I. Joe set by itself because there's so many G.I. Joe characters. Okay. Yeah, man, for sure. So a little bit of discussion here. What do you want to see? Like, what characters? If, if, we, if everything goes according to how we want it to go, all these get into hero clicks. What are, what are you most excited to happen? Well, when we get to community, you will actually see a little bit of that. We're not going to delve too far into it when we get into community, but you'll see a little bit of where the mindset of the player base, at least our community, the way they feel. So there's that. Do with that, do with that information what you will. Hopefully that excites you the way that it excites me. I'm a huge fan of Transformers, specifically 
Beast Wars, I'm hoping that this opens up a possible future of making Beast Wars into hero clicks. We'll see. Nobody knows. Awesome. So Personally, we'll, yeah. I myself, huge fan, My Little Pony, specifically the Apple family, just saying, next thing. <laughs> okay. Do you, this is me fanboying out right now. Do you realize that there's a possibility in the game of Heroclix in the future where you could sit down and have, like, Optimus Prime fight Blue Eyes White Dragon? Oh, I mean, you, you, that's you, pretty you, awesome. You could have Ghost Rider trying to take down an entire team of Decepticons, or you could have, like, Pinkie Pie and Rainbow Dash trying to take down uh, Starro. Of all things. Like, I want to see it. I want to see it happen is, right why now. Why is this a thing? But it could be a thing. So and that's why I love this game. <laughs> really excited for that. Really hope that it pans out the way. I think we kind of all hope that it pans out. Absolutely. Moving on. In the news, we've got some more spoilers for the upcoming DC Rebirth set. And before we jump into them, I just want to say I am starting to get messages on Twitter. I hope that you are getting some similar messages on Facebook that are saying things like, I think this set is going to bring me back to the game of hero clicks from this hiatus that I've been having. This is the set for me. Things like that. I'm like, yes, this is awesome. Making people happy across the board. Cause I mean, it is kind of frustrating if you're a DC fan and you get one DC set a year or like a gravity feed of wonder woman. And it's full of junk teen Titans that nobody wants to play. So I totally agree. Like, I can't feel what they're feeling exactly, but I just think to myself, what if this was swapped? What if we got one Marvel set a year and the rest was DC? I mean, I would be I would be sick to my stomach. I would be really mad with the game. So I totally understand where the DC fans are coming from, having to get all this Marvel stuff and then maybe, you know, one and you just you just hope it's the best set ever, you know, if you get one set a year. For sure. Yeah, I'm sur- I'm certainly uh, sympathetic towards that so we got six previews this week and uh, i'm I'm just gonna jump on to the first one and let's kind of ramp it up towards the more exciting stuff at the end now teen titans are obviously going to be a sub theme in this set Uh, i am going to mention this on this episode because i honest to god had to look it up again i forgot that this was a thing but there's a Teen Titans team ability. <laughs> Did you remember that that was a thing? I haven't seen yeah, that on a figure in such I, a long uh, time. Totally, totally knew that was a, a thing. <laughs> okay, so <coughs> just in case you don't know what this does, I'll read it real quick. It is the X-Men team ability, but here's what it does. Power action. Give an adjacent friendly character that can use this team ability uh, and – and action and heal that character one click and roll a d6 if they roll a one through four this character is dealt one unavoidable damage so there's a chance that you can heal them and not take damage that's what it does okay all right let's jump into the first preview it's going to be jericho with the teen titans team ability coming in at 75 and 50 point lines he is a six click long dial with a special speed power he has flight by the way no other special combat symbols a special speed power that lasts the entire length of his dial no special combat movement Uh, special movement or uh, anything like that either he does have one single trait it's called titans reborn this is why i needed to read the titans team ability up front is because you are going to see this numerous times Uh, titans reborn says when jericho is given a move action after resolutions he can use the titans team ability at no cost does that sound familiar to you at all it sounds like something they uh they put on a a couple of x-men characters uh, a little ways back yeah, they certainly do. So this is just a reused trait with a couple different words in there. I'm fine with it, honestly. I mean, it came in handy a couple times back in the day for me, but not a lot. So they're just uh, It's this. a good trait to have shared. It's a good shared trait. Okay. All right. Teen Titans and armor keywords. Special speed power is called contact, mind control, and sidestep. When Jericho uses mind control to target a single character and hits... Until your next turn, when that character attacks, all friendly characters can use shape change that succeed on a four through six. That's pretty sweet, actually. It's pretty good. <laughs> really good. Really good, really good, especially because I, I intentionally neglected to tell you this. He has eight range. <laughs> He's got sidestep and eight range. He's only 75 points, but 50 with, uh, points, you can perplex, still do that. With perplex, by the yeah, way. With, with, with perplex, attack. yeah. 
<laughs> so for that 50 point line, you still got the eight range, you still got the sidestep, you get a perplex still. That's pretty dumb, actually. I really like that. It's really good. He has a special defensive power for the first four clicks of his life. It is called Icon Shield at 32% of design limit. It gives him toughness and willpower. So this 50 little point, this 50 point little character that you're going to be using to do this stupid little thing has willpower. Jericho can use Invincible instead of Toughness when attacked by a character of lower points. All right, that portion of it probably not going to happen very often, but if it does, that's kind of cool, I guess, you know. But so yeah. for for 50 points, if you want to run him on that line, he has four clicks of life. 50 point line starts on click number three, by the way. I mean, 10 attack, he still has Perplex. I mean, you can get that nine range out of it if you want. I mean, it's it's a pretty good little figure. I like it. It's uh, number 18 in the set, so what's an uncommon? Yeah, an uncommon. And I personally, I think it might see some meta play, to be honest with you, for how strong my control can be nowadays. Yeah. I can uh, I can see him, you know, really uh, really throwing his weight around. Good stuff. Uh, so next up, kind of with this batch of figures, is the Super Rare Prime Bizarro. This one is specifically from his Outlaw run with Red Hood, which is pretty cool. I didn't read any of it, but uh, Bizarro is Bizarro, and I love me some Bizarro, so let's get into it. What makes this awesome is that he's only 125 points, people, and you'll... <laughs> He has insane stats. He also has the outside of Steam ability. He has Outlaws, Brute, and Monster keywords. Two traits, no special powers. Special combat symbols are Flight, Indom. He has three range, one bolt. His first trait reads Dark Trinity. When Bizarro attacks, modify attack value plus one for each other friendly character with the Outlaws keyword adjacent to the target. All right. Um, so depending on what Outlaws we get in the set, he might be really well. Yeah, I mean, really good, but, uh, so far, there aren't a lot of outlaws in modern here. His second trait is Freeze Vision. When Bizarro hits with one or more, uh, sorry, hits one or more characters after resolutions roll a d6 on a four through five, a, uh, a hit character gains immobile until your next turn. On a six, all hit characters gain immobile until your next turn. So, if for some reason you give him two bolts, or if he has flurry, or if you give him flurry or whatever, any close combat in caps, you can do a huge immobile thing, or you can just give someone a mobile, which is pretty cool. So maybe even uh, bypassing his charge. So let's just go through his, his first click here. Uh, 11, uh, 11 speed, charge, 11 attack, quake, 18 defense with invincible, 5 damage, battle fury. He does get super strength down the dial, I think. Him cheaper on points is that he can start with super strength, low to 12 here in the middle with one single click of precision strike, 19 defense with toughness. I don't know what that is supposed to like represent. Um, it's about him being really smart, just boom, right in the middle of his dial, which is really cool. He gets some outwit there too. Um, so he does break from the battle fury right in the middle when he has sidestep, which is really cool. Uh, so then he can actually use his range uh, with 12 and 11 attacks. Then he also has 19 defense with toughness, so he's getting smarter, but he's getting a little weaker. And then he goes right back. So his dial is, I just realized it's, it flows. It goes, ooh, dips and It's kind of like a bell curve. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. So all the stats come back at end dial. So I think he's awesome through and through. For only 125 points, also he moves the blocking terrain and destroys it. So for only 125 points, I think this Bizarre was awesome. Not going too in-depth about his dial. Just his damage output is amazing. Uh, he can always do at least four damage if he can get a object on his three damage clicks with super strength. So I love this Bizarro, and I think uh, he's a super rare prime to have for sure. So two things. One, remember how I said that I thought the other primes were bringing back the idea that primes were just supposed to be kind of overpowered, and for a while they weren't, and now they're all of a sudden back at, <laughs> at it again? This is really kind of like that to me for 125 points. That's a lot of beat stick. Two, there's people online complaining. They're like, I need my Bizarro to be more complex than this. Because that's not what, what I said exactly. They're like, uh, he doesn't really do anything special. I'm like, what do you want out of a Bizarro? What do you think he's going to sit down and do trigonometry with you? Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's, he's Bizarro. He's a beat stick. Like, I don't know what you wanted. The fact that they gave him the freeze vision trait alone it's like, hey, he did something kind of cool. You, you want a really complicated Bizarro? Go back and play the one that had the Bizarro tokens or whatever, and you yeah. had to hit him and click him all over. The, go play that one. This one's he does exactly what a Bizarro should do. Plus, he has the Outsiders team ability, which is pretty sweet. 
Yeah, for sure. And he, you know, he's specific to a version of the story where he gets really smart. You know, I think that's actually a really cool thing they put in dial without having to use a special power or anything else. It's just the way his dial changes. I think that's awesome. All right, let's move on to Black Mana, number 54. So it's a super rare. Now, I'm liking the sculpt, by the way, but I'm really looking forward to see what the sculpt really looks like, you know? Oh. Uh, you never know. Yeah, right? I got gotcha. you. Okay, so uh, another thing I did want to say is I would – remember when we were talking about how the Aquaman movie was actually really good, and then I was hoping we yeah. got a Black Manta, and then I was hoping that it ended up being like a really good Black Manta because I enjoyed the movie so much? Let me go through the dial. Let me know how you feel after we go through the dial. 75 points. He has so many keywords, it's stupid. Injustice League, Legion of Doom, Secret Society of Supervillains, Suicide Squad, Pirate. Okay, maybe it's just a lot of words, not exactly a lot of yeah. keywords. Just a lot of words in general. Okay, he has the dolphin symbol. No other special combat symbols. He does have a running shot with 9 speed, 11 attack with a special attack power, 17 defense with a special defensive power, 6 range, 2 bolts. He has a trait. It's called the Black Pearl. Power. Generate up to 4 water terrain markers within range, each adjacent to at least one other. And at least one marker must be adjacent to Black Manta. When Black Manta is KO'd, remove all of these from the map. Free if Black Manta occupies water terrain, you may place him into a square of water terrain within five squares. I think this is going to come in handy more often than when he's on a, just a water map in general. I don't know if you're going to be really using him to generate the water. Like, why do you want to use a power action just to generate water terrain markers? Especially when it's only four. Yeah. It's only four. You can only One has to be right next to him, so you can only... I don't, it says within five squares, but... I mean, you can only go out four range from it. Like, I thought that was a little weird, right? Because that one has to start next to him, and they all have to be right next to each other. So even if you draw a direct line, it's only four squares away. Honestly, I like, I'm not in love with that uh, that first trade. All right, let's move on. Because I think that's just like a little added thing that they added to it. Yeah. Not really, not really super good. Here's when it starts just getting interesting, okay? The special attack power is called Devil Ray, Energy Explosion, and Poison. When Black Mamba hits – Black Manta, I'm sorry. Black, Black Manta Mamba. hits with a range attack, give each hit character a poison dart marker. When Black Manta uses poison, characters with poison dart markers are considered adjacent. That's pretty cool. Awesome. I like that a lot. That's really interesting. Especially, I mean, that's flavorful. Sounds good. He can duel uh, because he's got the two range. You running shot up five, shoot six away. You hit two characters in opposite directions, you know, and then you're poisoning from like wide distances and stuff like that. So I thought that was really cool. In addition to you know just the basic energy explosion, which I thought was right. really cool as well. The special defensive power is called Adaptive Battle Suit, which gives him energy shield deflection and vulnerability and willpower. That's a really good power. It's it's basic, <laughs> but it does a lot of stuff, so it's really good. You're talking 19 defense on a 75-point dial from range. So I thought that right. was really good. Okay, so once he goes from the ranged combat, obviously, that he's doing up front, he has five clicks long. Five click long dial. Uh, click four and five are sidestep blades, and obviously that's supposed to represent uh, he's going in for the kill, I guess, maybe. And then yeah. click two, three, and four, he has perplex. Top dial, nice. he has base three damage. And then he also has the – what are they calling that team ability? Is it the question mark? Uh, I think mark? it's team, team player. Team player. It's the question yeah. mark one. It makes him a wild card. Yeah. Okay, so there, there's that. Uh, is it worth being a super rare? I don't know if this is worth being a super rare. I feel like – what they want to do with the sculpt, and if it turns out looking like this with a cool water, him popping out of the ocean, then it's like, it's definitely a super rare sculpt. And I really, and I mean, I'm not going to lie, I really, really like this style. Energy Explosion, that poison is is great. I love it. I know he's he's tanky top dial. I mean, he can be a 20 defense if he occupies water, right, from range. Like, I think, I think he's an awesome black mana, especially for only 75 points. The, I dial... the fact that he's that low a point value and what right. he gives you for that low a point value, I can see that. I bet some people are out there like, this guy has no idea what he's talking about. He's such a good Black Manta. <laughs> I mean, he's he's okay. He's not that. I think someone out there is probably too much in love with Black Manta, if you know what I'm talking about. Just but, saying, yeah. Just saying. But I forgot about that plus one defense in water terrain. Yeah. That's good. I mean, 20 defense from range, that's pretty decent. Yep. 
All right. Um, so going on to my next pick, uh, when I saw this, I didn't think I was going to talk about it, uh, but we'll figure it out in a little bit here. So we're going to talk about Raven. She has five range, one bolt, no special combat symbols. She's 65 or 50 points, and she has Mystics and Team Titans for team abilities. She is that Titans Reborn trait where she's given a move action after resolution. She can use Team Titans team ability at no cost. Her special speed power for her first four clicks of her dial. So her time dial looks like an 11 speed with a special speed power, 11 attack blank, 17 defense with super senses, and one damage with a special damage power. Uh, the speed power is phasing teleport stealth, uh, passenger three, but only to carry characters that share a keyword with her, regardless of flight symbol. So if she's carrying up the Teen Titans, she can carry up Starfire, even though she can fly all over the place. So that's awesome. So she's our Teen Titans taxi, who can be uh, 65 or 50 points. Personally, big fan of her at 50. Um, and we'll get into that. She, her special damage power for her first three clicks of light is perplex probability control and support. Yeah, it's pretty good. <laughs> uh, so even though she's that's, really that's squishy, not good. This, this yeah, terrible, it's just terrible. terrible. Perplex and prob, ah, just, those are garbage powers. Um, so even though 15 points less might, you know, make or break your build, we'll see what the rest of the Teen Titans even out do. By the way, she has Teen Titans Monster and Mystical. So for Monster Team, she's actually pretty good too. Uh, so for only 50 points, she's like a mini Zatanna. Um, which is awesome. Honestly, this is better than normal Zatanna, since I think she doesn't have Perplex and Prob on her 50 point. Or maybe she does, it's just not TK. Either ways, I love this character a lot, especially with the uh, special movement power. Here's why I really, really like this character. It's the flavor text of the power. So on her 50 point line, she has ESD, and then she gets uh, Penetrant Psychic Blast. So that's exclusive to click three and four, top two clicks on her 50 point line. She gets one click of Perplex after... She loses that special power on click four. And then on click five and four, her last two clicks, sorry, five and six, they're all black power. So it's stealth, steel energy, regen, and outwit, okay? Let me read you uh, some of the name of the powers here, okay? This is great. This is just, this is insanely awesome. Her steel energy is, I'm trying to let trigons be bygones. <laughs> <laughs> I can't make this up, guys. Her, her ESD, and I, I kid you not, is called That's So Raven. This is so <laughs> dumb. <laughs> like, like, so I, I was looking at this figure earlier and before the show, and I laughed, and Chris was like, what's so funny? And I'm like, this is hilarious. That's so Raven. I mean, it's awesome, okay? It's it's great. Um, apparently, uh, her, she was hiding inside Times Square New Year's Ball. Like, that's the name of her stealth. Like, oh, okay, Raven, sure. Like, it's it's awesome. I love the name of her powers. I mean, that's so Raven, and the let's let Trigons be Vigons. I just, those are dad jokes. Some some guy in the company was like, how can I fit my dad jokes onto this Raven, this Raven dial? <laughs> and he did it, and it went perfectly. And what I don't crazy. understand is why is p the perplex is called, sorry, teammate, did you not want me to control your emotions? That seems so forced. Why didn't you just say, sorry, did you not want me to control your emotions? Yeah, I'll agree That's, with that What's one. with the word teammate? Yeah, That's teammate's so weird. Okay, legitimately, this figure's insanely good, though. Insanely. Oh, yeah, 100% agree. That 50-point line, did you mention the pin I did. I did mention the pin sort of. 11 attack pin from stealth? I mean... It's only going to be one damage. Right. Maybe two with their perplex. But who cares? Also, the Mystics team ability on the little 50-point character. So that's two Titans that we have so far that have 50-point lines. Obviously, we're getting a Beast Boy. We already know so, yeah. about that. I'm looking For sure. forward to seeing a full-blown Teen Titans team or Titans team that are like just a bunch of 50 point lines, just like when that X Men set came out and you had your 50 point Colossus, your 50 point Wolverine, your 50 point Stone. That was so cool. I liked that back then. I think this is a good idea now. For sure. I, I don't know why anyone would run this at 65 points when you could run it at 50. And I think the only reason, too, is just to give her a little bit more uh, health, you know, a little bit more staying power. And I think gotcha. that's about it. Because. Four clicks or six clicks and super senses. A rollout is always good, but honestly, for 50 points, I think she does. The, I mean, she does the exact same job for 50 points. So why not, I, right? I like the fact that if you do start on the 50 point line and someone hits you for an average of three damage, you end up on her last click with regen. Right. 
and you can regen back to top click. <laughs> like, that's yeah, pretty sweet. Awesome. With the Mystics team of <laughs> <laughs> That's really good. I really like this. This is a really good figure. And not to mention, it's number 40 in the set, so it's only a rare? Only a rare, folks. Really good support for a rare. For a rare. Really, really good piece. I'm genuine. I understand now why some of these people have been messaging me saying, this is my set. I'm going to get back into the game because of this set. I totally agree. That's Plus, so rare. some people are... Yeah, that's so Raven. Classic Raven. <laughs> all right. The last figure that I have to talk about. First of all, we should say that it is confirmed Batman Metal are the chases for this set, if you did not already know. We have two chases that have been spoiled. The one that I'm going to talk about is Murder Machine. Uh, Murder Machine is like an android version of batman right this is a this is a iron man batman right tony stark kind of, batman it's i don't know it's weird all right it's it's weird so they did give them their own keyword it is called dark knights i believe dark dark okay. knights is that different than dark knight was that a keyword was just dark knight a keyword was, i don't think dark knight was a keyword right. yeah I'm going to go with that. So they give them their own keyword. You will be able to play them on the th on a theme team with them. Armor, monster, and robot are the other keywords. You have improved targeting, ignores blocking, and destroys it as you power through. Has a 200-point line and a 100-point line. Three traits. The first trait is the Alfred Protocol knock – I think it's knockback. I'm having trouble yeah, reading this. It's a little blurry, so correct me if I'm wrong. When the murder machine KOs an opposing character, parentheses, does not include KOs by knockback damage, in parentheses, after resolutions, he may make an attack. And in parentheses, yep. can trigger multiple times per turn, in parentheses. So that's really good in of itself. Multiple attacks good. on a character has always historically been a really good thing. It, it always reminds me of King Thor, and you know how much I love King Thor, so that's a really yeah. cool trait. Second trait, reckless disregard for life. Once per turn, when the murder machine targets and hits a single opposing character with a close attack, after resolutions, deal each say each other character that is adjacent to that word I cannot read. The murder machine or the target one penetrating damage, parentheses, includes friendly characters and... Usually the target. And usually <laughs> the target. I, I don't, I don't know what that is saying. I, I don't know. Third trait is called, we will not hide in the shadows anymore. When the murder machine occupies clear uh, terrain and is targeted by ranged attacks, modify his defense by plus one. That's good. Double, bra uh, double slash. When targeted by an opposing character that can use stealth, modify defense by plus one. Double slash. When targeted by an opposing character occupying hindering terrain, Modified defense by plus one. Three separate modal abilities to increase his own defense. By So you could possibly get it up to plus three. He has a special damage power. It's called Technomorphing. It gives him probability control and shape change. All right, now that's a lot of stuff. What's the dial look yep. like to add all of that information to? Well, we're looking at 10, 12, 18, 4 as the stats with... Running shot, energy explosion, that pink power, and the special damage power that I just mentioned. All right. Seven range, two bolts, just in Dom as far as special combat symbols. All right. I like the fact that you can possibly get up to 21 defense depending on where he's standing and where they're shooting from. So that's right. pretty cool, right? Yeah. Uh, four clicks of Invincible followed by four clicks of Invulnerability on the eight-click-long dial. That's really good for, I mean, all of the reasons that you would think. <laughs> the dial the dial is not actually that complex. No, it's, it's not. It's pretty simple. Two clicks of Running Shot followed by six clicks of Sidestep. Uh, four clicks of Energy Explosion followed by four clicks of Blades. I don't know... I don't, I don't know if I would want to use the blades. I don't know. Because I don't like characters that transition from range right into making you use... Yeah, he's going straight into close combat. combat stuff here. It's a little weird. 
Manta, Black Manta did that a minute ago, and also I still think that's still a little weird. Then, <laughs> uh, four clicks of that special damage power followed by four clicks of Outwit. It's four clicks of four damage followed by four clicks of three damage. His attack never drops below a 10, and that's only on the last three clicks of his life. Everything before that is higher than 10, at least four clicks of 11. He's good. Don't get me wrong. I like him. I don't yeah. think he's crazy good. <laughs> For 100 points, you start with top dial. This is going to be click four. Top dial sidestep instead of the running shot. I wish kind of would have put this, the click that's no, – click number two has a click of running shot. Swap that to click number four and put sidestep where click number two is. Then, then we're talking. Yeah. But I don't know. There's just like a lot of words on here. It, it all does a lot of stuff, but I don't know if it does a lot of stuff well. I feel like he has potential, um, and I think his most potential might be at the 100-point line, depending on what your point value your game is, just because maybe you can get that and make a bunch of attacks off, you know, just keep shooting, shooting, shooting. Um, and that'd be cool, but again, it's also only if you KO someone, so I don't know if you're going to be KOing someone with an 11-3 damage, so, you know, we'll have to see. Uh, I, I'm not, like, super impressed by him for 200 points, you know? So, hypothetically, you start off on click number four for his 100-point line, right? Yeah. He has sidestep, so he's not a lot of moving attack unless you give him some kind of equipment. But let's just throw out the idea of giving equipment out for okay. just a second, okay? Just look at the individual figure. You're going to sidestep up. You're going to shoot. We'll say you do the four damage. You KO a figure. You already moved. There's no more movement. So I hope that your next target is within the range of seven for you to be able to continue doing that. Right. I don't see that triggering very often. I'm just saying, this is not Hawkeye, all right? You're not running and gunning and running and gunning right, yeah. like, like with Hawkeye. This is pretty situational comparatively. I and agree. for a lot more points. Well, that's him, huh? Uh, moving on. <laughs> like, that was a really bad transition. Like, how long have you been on a podcast? I don't know. I just, I'm just going to do a really rough transition. So anyway... Uh, in the deep dark lair of the Batman, uh, we have Dawnbreaker, which is Green Lantern Batman. Uh, he is also Chase. He also has Dark Knights. He has Green Lantern cores, and he has Re Ruler, Reporter, Monster, oh, Monster, Monster, Duh, Monster. They're all monsters. Uh, he has three traits, and then he has no special powers at all. He's Green Lantern team ability. He's 275 points. By the way. Really like the 75 point line. We'll get to that in a bit. He's flight in Dom, seven range, one bolt. He sees through hindering terrain. He has the same reckless disregard for life that uh, Murder Machine had, so I'm not going to read it again. That's the whole deal in penetrating on close attacks. He has the same, we will not hide in the shadows anymore. Not going to read that again. That's the whole, if he's in whatever, you know, not in hindering, and they're in hindering, and they're in stealth, and blah, 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 blah. He gets plus ones of defense, just because those belong traits. The trait that's really interesting that makes this guy good is Nightmare Constructs. He has Barrier Traded. Whenever an opposing character generates a bystander, right? You ready for this? Uh, sorry. One or more bystanders characters. Excuse me. After resolutions, you may generate the same bystander slash bystanders. Okay. And these bystanders that you generate have combat values plus one. And they have max one. So... You can only make one of each bystander. So if your opponent makes a walking wood, obviously they generate two at the beginning of the game, you would get one walking wood with plus one stats. They also, because it's a bystander they generate, which is Leslie Evans, they give to you, you would get a Leslie Evans with plus one stats and the Leslie Evans they also give you, which is really cool. If they make a Starro fight, you get a Starro fight, which isn't like great, you know, but if they make those dinosaurs, you get a max one of each named dinosaur, but your dinosaurs have plus one stats. All right, guys, this is pretty dope, okay? So now let's read his dial. So for 200 points, he is also eight clicks long, okay? He has running shot, 11, sorry, 12 movement running shot, 11 attack, penetrating second blast. He has pen size entire dial, okay? 19 defense, that pink power, and four damage with nothing. So top dial, he's a pretty basic running gun, boom, shooting through your defenses, killing reducers and whatnot, all right? He never goes below a 10 attack. He has a lot of 11s. He got 112. And if you push to a 12, you get invulnerability for three clicks and then perplex for three clicks. So that's on his second through his fourth click. He also gets some phasing randomly spattered into his dial. On his 75-point starting line, he has enhancement, 
3 damage, 17 defense with Invincible, 11 attack with Penetrate, Psychic Blast, and 10 movement with Running Shot. Uh, after he loses Running Shot, he gets 3 clicks of Phasing, and then 3 clicks of ESD, but he has Enhancement his entire time. So I think for 75 points, people are going to want to put this guy on, like, competitive teams. I can really see him being a thing competitive with how many bystanders there are. Of course, even if he, there aren't any bystanders generated on either side, right? Hired Flunkies, not even those, Okay. You still have a character with running shot, penetrating a psychic blast, okay? So you have a tertiary attacker. You also have someone who can be great support because he has traded barrier with seven range. He has the green lancer and team ability, which means he can carry up your force. And he has three damage with enhancement, all right? That enhancement's dope. And sure, he can be outwitted in one shot pretty easily. So you got to be careful, which is why his whole we won't hide in the shadows anymore trait it's very important to remember, so we can hopefully have a 20 defense on a 75-point line. You have to be very uh, careful with this guy, because if they have outwit, it's going to really hurt. He can die pretty fast for 75 points. But I just think I think his bystander thing is going to be really sweet. I think if we see even more people that make bystanders, especially in this set, uh, that he's going to be really good. I, I honestly can see him. People try to put him in a meta team, and I don't think I'm too far off thinking that. What do you, what do you say, Chris? I think his 75-point line is so much better than Murder Machine's 100-point line. Oh, oh yeah, totally. He's so good. Uh, interestingly, if you put them both on the same team, the Dawnbreaker could carry the Murder Machine and use his uh, enhancement to increase that 4 damage oh, to yeah, 5 damage, go. so that, that'd be pretty, pretty nice. But you're absolutely right. And this goes for, honestly, most hero clicks in the game. One yeah. outwit could turn your character into a glass cannon. This is really a glass cannon. So, obviously, it's a range-based character. Make sure you keep him at range. Make sure you're running when you can run. That's why they gave him phasing teleport. So, <laughs> yep. So, I, he's really good. And I 100% believe you when you say that he's probably going to end up on meta team. I think his sculpt is also pretty cool. For sure. I'm looking forward to – now, I, I actually took the time to read Metal. So there were certain Batman that I liked more. And out of all of them, these were honestly my two least favorite out of all of them. Oh, that's I'm kind really of a bummer. Looking, no, no, it's fine because, I mean, we're going to get them eventually. That's I'm not true. Any, that's any true. rush or anything like that. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not complaining. I'm just – it just happened that way, so no okay. big deal. And we'll get them probably within the week or within a couple of weeks. But I'm right. really looking forward to Flash Batman is going to be super dumb, I bet. I really hope. I hope they give him the speedster uh, keyword and then the uh, – what is it? The one where he gets tokens when they hit – Oh, the speed called? force, yeah. Thank you. Why, why can I not think it? That's going to be really sweet. And then everyone's favorite is uh, the Batman who laughs. Okay, that's, not that's a fan of the Batman who laughs just because well, everybody else likes it. That's why. <laughs> you're, so you're a Batman who laughs hipster. Got yeah, it. totally. Yeah, I don't use the hipster <laughs> word. I don't like that word. Uh, but I, I didn't read the story like you did. I have no reason not to like anyone. But I just like the Doomsday Batman because he looks funny. So I want to see what the Doomsday Batman does if we get him. Do you think he'll be even more of a beat stick than that Bizarro was? Oh, dude, I, I think we have to, right? Like... Because the last time we got a, a Doomsday version of a character, it was Super Doom. And I guess we got a Doomsday LE, but he sucked. So I want him just to be 20 defense, 12 attack. I want him to be nuts. I don't know what he does in the story, but I assume if he's anything like Doomsday, he should have Superman killing powers. So I want him to be really good so I can put him next to my Super Doom. You know, I, I, I like it. I like it a lot. All right. I guess we will just have to wait and see, and hopefully they'll just be as awesome as we are anticipating. Absolutely. Murder Machine, honestly, was, like, used one of the least out of all of that storyline. Oh. He really fixated okay. on the Batman who laughs. He got, like, a lot of time. Dawnbringer got ag quite uh, – Dawnbreaker, I'm sorry. Dawnbreaker got quite a bit of uh, – panel time i don't know what, the, what you call, call <laughs> i was about to say you're like quite a bit like, of and i'm like it's screen, not screen time chris screen time i don't know panel time uh so but it was mostly uh fixated on the batman who laughs and i'm really looking forward to that i hope that they do really stupid things like generate pogs for the little robins oh uh, for sure that, right like the back of the like box art leaves. has a a little robin you know kind of like how there was a wild child that saber tooth so yeah for sure all right.
right. Well, I guess we'll wait and see. Although, I just – I'm really happy about these previews. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I'm very, very happy for everybody out there that was a Batman medal. Because if you get on to the realms or Reddit or anybody, anywhere, people are all like, oh, man, I can't wait to get Batman medal pieces. And then there's always that like, art that almost compulsory – yeah, good luck. We're probably never going to get those. There's that guy that always has that to say. And then it happened all of a sudden, and now I'm, like, really happy for all of those people that were really big Batman metal fans. So yeah. good good on you, kids. Good on you. All right. I'm done with previews. Are you good? Yeah, I'm good, man. All right. It is the beginning of the month, which means that it is time for the Heroic Ranking Up Ceremony. All right, there are going to be two people we need to talk about this month. As always, at the beginning of the month, that's when we do our heroic ceremonies. Uh, the first person we're going to talk about is going to be Porcupine Spaceship Grenade, and he's moving from the title of Citizen to Vigilante, so that is always going to be in the sh- podcast show notes. Thank you very much, sir. We appreciate it. And the second person we're going to talk about is moving from Vigilante to Protagonist, and that is going to be Mock Taskmaster. We really appreciate it, guys. Thank you very much for all of uh, all of your patronage on our Patreon, and congratulations on your brand new titles. Uh, we are going to be reinvigorating our Patreon and the things that we are giving away and things like that. We haven't really been keeping up with that. We're not the best. That was new to us. We're still new to Patreon, so yeah. Um, we're going to reinvigorate that, and some of you guys are going to be reaching out to just uh, so we can get your addresses if you wouldn't mind giving them to us so that we can stock you i mean send you things in the mail is what yeah. i mean by that but anyway it's gonna be real fun uh eventually and i'm i am pretty much looking forward to that okay well that is that and uh don't forget that you can earn your heroic title throughout the month if you just want to jump and instead of the patreon you can do things through our paypal and that's also in our show notes that we always link all the time when we post the podcast. So, all right, that's it for that. Let's move on to community. There are dozens of us. Dozens. The shortest community in the history of community, probably. We put out a probably. poll every probably. Well, maybe okay. Community Tuesday's question we put up always on Facebook and on Twitter. This week's Community Tuesday's question was: With the most recent announcements, which of the announced properties are you most looking forward to? If, when. They make them into hero clicks. It was just a poll, and I got I got 45 votes on on uh, Twitter. I don't know how many you got. I'm, I'll break mine down, and then you can do yours because we did not collaborate beforehand. No. Nope. Um, coming in at dead last is the Orville, with seven percent okay. of my votes. Coming in for in third place is G. I'm sorry, is My Little Pony, and My Little Pony actually only got nine percent, so it only beat the Orville by two percent. Oh, okay. So not not many people looking forward to My Little Pony, I guess, or they would have chosen something else before then. Coming in first is Transformers at 51% of the votes. G.I. Joe came in at 33%. We got a, quite a few comments in uh, below, but we're not going to go into that. But uh, as far as the Twitter army goes, we're saying Transformers for us. What, uh, me, personally, I'm actually looking more for... Uh, Orville, just because I'm completely caught up on Orville, and I really, really like it, and I'm looking for the weekly shows as they come out now. I'm like actively waiting for them. Well, that what is, about that's actually awesome. I'm glad that you're enjoying it, man. It's so good. So, on Facebook, it's a little weird. So, I can't do four... I cannot do four things in a poll to vote. I can only do two things. But in groups, when you do polls, you can do all sorts of stuff. I don't like it. I don't like how Facebook pages work. I tried and failed with my first idea on the polls, and it just didn't work. So I had to do two polls. One was My Little Pony versus Orville, and then one was G.I. Joe versus Transformers. I decided the two probably least favorites have them fight each other, and then probably the two favorites have them fight each other. That way it's pseudo even out votes, I feel like, because if it's My Little Pony. I think think that was a good idea, because if you look at my percentages, Orville and My Little Pony were the closest. So I think you did. Yeah. So I think it's pretty close, but obviously keep in mind, since they're two separate polls, everybody probably voted twice. Like, that's just a fact, you know, because obviously I can't manage who votes for what. So everybody voted twice. That's just a fact of life. So on the My Little Pony versus Orville, Orville is last place uh, with only 23 votes. Oddly enough, fourth place is G.I. Joe with only 30 votes. 
coming in uh, coming in third. Sorry, uh, fourth, third, now second place. Coming in second, very surprising, is My Little Pony with five more votes than G.I. Joe. And I guess you guys like robots because Transformers won overall with a first place win of 57 votes. Whoa, whoa, whoa. They're robots in disguise, Calder. That's like the main point of it. They're I hear. Robots. What do you think this is, Ultron? <laughs> <laughs> Every one of those should have shape change, I'm just saying. Oh, I'm just saying it'd make for a terrible, terrible set, because I would hate it if they all had shape change. Don't make me hate Transformers, man. So, uh, just a little thing for me. I did not grow up in the 80s. Shocker, I know. Or even late 90s. Shocker again, I know. So, G.I. Joe and Transformers weren't huge for me. Um, I really like the G.I. Joe movies, and honestly... Because I think it was like 2007 era was like the Transformers movies coming out. I did technically kind of grow up in the, you know, teenage-ish years with Transformers. So I do like the Transformers movies a lot. I'm not going to lie. Everybody else had really harsh opinions. But because I was a lot younger and had glazed whatever view of the world, I love the Transformers movies. And I, I love Shia LaBeouf because I'm a kid who watches Disney Channel. So, of course. Um, but, of course, My Little Pony coming out like 2010 or whatever, when I was babysitting my little brother, he wanted to watch it a lot. I actually probably grew up the most with My Little Pony, which makes me sound really young, everybody else really old. So I'm okay with that. Y'all are ancient. So I like My Little Pony. <laughs> I like horses, okay? Just leave me alone, all right? Applejack. Horses, I wear hats. Yep. So, yeah. Jaylene loves, loves My Little Pony. No should. joke. She was literally so. downstairs watching My Little Pony when I was like, hey, I'm going upstairs to record. She's like, okay. So, okay, I'm learning about it, friendship, Chris. She just <laughs> friendship. <laughs> Next on the docket, Care Bears. <laughs> oh jeez, ah, come on. I don't know about Care Bears. If My Little Pony can get could get hero clicks, then there is absolutely no reason the Care Bears could not get hero clicks. I'm just saying. So there is our Community Tuesdays question. Interesting to me, at least. I think it's uh, awesome. Hands down, the winner is going to be Transformers. Hopefully that pans out, guys. Really Hopefully. looking forward. To that really i really want to be that person that gives you good news and hopefully before i leave it'll be that good news that i get to deliver to you guys i'm really looking forward to that all right uh we have one last thing and that is going to be jedi legends hero clicks tip of the week help you i can <laughs> take you to your destination i will all right so he said knowing the right number for the right occasion heavy objects do three damage when thrown Heavy objects is plus two damage in a close combat attack. Light objects do two damage when thrown. Light, ob light objects do one damage in close combat attack. Uh, bonus, if you still play with this. Calder, do you remember ultra lights and ultra heavies? Sadly, I do. What do you mean, sadly? Those are awesome. Because Mary Marvel can hypersonic up and hit you for eight damage, Chris. That's why it's sad. Well, not anymore. Sucked. Now with the change yes, of thank goodness, not anymore. I think they should bring back Ultra Lights and Ultra Heavies. I thought those were a good oh, idea. Why do you hate me? <laughs> why do you... I just like the idea of someone carrying around like a one little rock and just throwing it at pay it for paying somebody for one damage. So, like, by the way, away. my only problem with the Ultra Lights where one was a basketball and one was a sledgehammer, as if getting <laughs> hit with those two things is similar. It's not. Oh. Well, I mean... Is it is it different? Because like it depends on who yeah. throws it, right? No, it depends yeah. on who throws it. Because if Superman throws a sledgehammer, I feel like it's gonna feel the same as if he hits you with a basketball. It doesn't matter if you're just a regular human. If you get hit with one of those at like super sonic speed, it's not gonna matter. It's just gonna obliterate you. Jeez. <laughs> that's that's it. That's all you had to say. Okay. But, all right. Well, uh. Uh, hopefully that tip is uh, somebody. Out there, if you are new to the game of Hero Clicks, you remember that. It's, it, Jedi Legend always gives us good tips for uh, the newer players, and sometimes he keeps us up on our toes because I forget some of these rules entirely. I'm not going to lie. Not, uh, same thing here, not going to lie. During the tournament, I was having that Hydra generic picking up heavy objects, and I didn't throw them ever because I honestly didn't know how much damage they dealt when thrown. And I was like, <laughs> ah, I, just, I don't want to look stupid. <laughs> So instead of asking, you're just like, I'm just not going to throw it. I'm yep. Just, I'm going to sit here in silence. 100% <laughs> correct. Well, that's certainly one way to play the game, I yep. guess. Yep. Terrible, yeah. terrible way to play the game, guys. Just ask. Just ask. Just ask. Yep. Just ask. 
Okay. Uh, well, one last sort of thing for community. Uh, Malcolm Rush, he gave us St. Patrick's Day's question. Uh, we're going to wait till it's closer to St. Patrick's Day, if that's okay for you. And, yeah, there we go. Well, it's, it's going to be because I'm not answering them now. <laughs> I'm going to go downstairs and play Fallout 76. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> Jeez. All right. As always, we put that Community Tuesdays question up on Facebook and on Twitter. You can follow us on Facebook. Just search Dial H for Hero Clicks. On Twitter, you can just uh, at Dial H for Hero Clicks. That is the number four. You can send us an email. We like to get those from time to time. Dial H for Hero Clicks at gmail.com. And I think that's it. That's all I got. Do you have anything else? Yeah, a little shout out to our Redbubble page, which I used to get a Howdy Howdy Let's Get Rowdy shirt. I'm going to post a picture of that up on Facebook along with some of the stickers that we have there. And, of course, you can get those stickers by also being on our Patreon. So just a shout out to our Redbubble page. Really, really nice T-shirt material, especially for only like 20 bucks on a T-shirt. So really love that. But uh, that's that's it. That's all I have to end us off. So I'm ready to read us out. Yep. As a reminder, Dial H for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Hero Clicks singles and sealed products. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Bye, guys. Happy trails. My, 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 my stuff.